in two, two types. First type is called non-productive cuff, and other names is dry cuff. Second type is a productive cuff, and other names is tenacious cuff. What about non-productive cuff definition? It's considered as serving no useful purpose, rather it increases discomfort to the patient. Everybody is subject to uh, attacks of dry cough, and this is useless, and so on without any usefulness. But it leads to the discomfort to the patient. And for treatment of non-productive cough, we use what is called antitussive agents. So antitussive agents are useful in the treatment of <coughs> non-productive or dry cough. What about the productive cough? It's characterized by a presence of excessive subutum and may be associated with conditions such as chronic bronchitis and bronchiectasis. And from its definitions, it is considered a useful cup. Why? Because it clears secretions outside our body. In this condition, for the treatment of productive cuff, because of the secretion, use what is called expectorants. So, expectorants are useful in the treatment of tenacious or productive cuff, or what is called wet cuff. <coughs> Ideal antitussive should suppress the frequency as well as intensity of coughing without affecting the normal elimination of excessive secretions from the respiratory tracts. So, the normal process of what? Of the clearance of secretion. Expectorants increase the volume and decrease the viscosity of secretion to enhance the propulsion of the secretion upward and outward by ciliar movement and coughing. So, how the expectorant act? Everybody ask uh, himself or herself, how the expectorant act? Act by increasing the volume. This is the first one. And decrease the viscosity. Increase the volume and decrease the viscosity of the secretion. And this will lead to enhance the propulsion of the secretion. As shown in uh, an upward propagation, yani movement. Movement of the secretion in order to be expelled outside our body. Proportion of the secretion upward and outward by what? By ciliary movement and cup. So, what about classifications of drugs used for cuff? Classified in two. The following. First, peripheral acting drugs. Second, peripheral and central acting drugs. Third class, drugs that act centrally. What about those acting peripherally? Including pharyngeal demulsant. And that's mean emollient. Pharyngeal demulsant and expectorants. So, what about expectorants? Expectorant in, in, includes two types. First type called mucokinetics. Second type called mucolytics. What about central acting drugs? As you know, or as you studied in the previous lectures, in the first uh, first term, uh, we, we have what is, as you know, opiates are narcotic analgesics, but can be used as what? As drugs for cough, antitussive. And this drugs called uh, opiate act centrally, not act very far. Other non opiates okay this is the classifications of the drugs used for cough and this is a popular question i might then face these questions in the exam clear more details about peripheral acting antitussive our drugs for cough as i said include pharyngeal demulsant and for example which is available in the market glycerin liberize Lozenges were well, lincotis containing syrup. What about the in the beginning of the lectures, including mucokinetics, example, ammonium chloride, sodium citrate, potassium iodide, and etc. What about mucolytics? Bazaka, bromhexine, and this is available in the market. It is called samarine. 
This is called Sami. This is a from uh, one of the contents is from hexene. And acetyl cysteine. What about central acting? As I said, include opiates and non opiates. Opiates, codeine, follow codeine, morphine, or ethyl morphine. And this is one of the components which is a, a syrup which is popular in the uh, pharmacies uh, called the uh, uh, tosiran or tosifan. Include codeine or follow codeine. Non opiate, no caffeine. For example, this uh, no, not uh, to be uh, uh, shown to uh, the of the This is for uh, uh, for inspection. What about central and peripheral acting? And we have one drug called benzoanetate. Dimorphin. Dimorphin, as I said, indirect peripheral acting, cuff suppressant, and they provide a protective coat mechanism, a protective coat over sensory receptors. As I said, in the beginning of the there are receptors in the throat, the respiratory tracts, and the lungs. And this is in the lungs called secret receptor. So the action of demulsant provide a protective coat over a sensory receptors on, on pharynx and reduce and efferent. This reduce the efferent impulses from the inflamed or irritated the mechanism of the muscle. Everybody ask you everybody ask you about how the answer to provide a protective coat over sensor receptors on the pharynx, reduce the efferent impulses from the inflamed or irritated mucosa. They provide relief in a dry cough arising from the throat. The muscle provide relief in a dry cough arising from the throat. Example, honey and the garage. As you know, honey, honey and the guys. The guys in Arabic are uh, are okay. Expectorants include mucokinetics and mucolytics. These expectorants stimulate the flow of the respiratory tract secretions by what? By stimulating a bronchial secretory cell to increase volume and the ciliary movement and their removal. And as I mentioned, the expectorant used for productive or tenacious cough. Used for protective or productive ahu or tenacious cough. <coughs> Example, volatile oils and certain emetics in sub-emetic doses, ammonium chloride, sodium citrate, guaiacol, and guaiophenistine or phenicine. Essential oil, this example, provide only mild expectorations by directly stimulating the bronchial secretory cells. This is act by direct stimulation of the bronchial secretory cells. <coughs> now it is used has declined, not used or not popular use of this essential oil. Sodium and potassium citrate, example, ammonium chloride, another example, potassium iodide. It's also one of the side of the gastric irritant, acts reflexy as well. IDE, it is a dangerous in patients sensitive to iodine and interfere with thyroid function. This is IDE, is one of the expectorant. A prolonged use can induce goiter and hypothyroidism. Less popular now because of hazard of this side effect. A guaya, uh, a guaya call, these safe expectorants with a proven efficacy. Mucolytics. Mucolytics alter the chemical characteristics of mucus in order to decrease its viscosity and facilitate its removal by ciliar action. Again, mucolytics, one of the drugs used for what? For the productive cup. For the productive cup. Commonly used Mucolytics, acetylcysteine, carbocysteine, bromhexine, amproxol, and dornase alpha. As I said, these act by alter the chemical characteristics 
of mucus to decrease its viscosity and facilitate its removal by ciliary cell or by ciliary action. It depolymerizes muco polysaccharides of mucus and also increases the isosomal enzyme activity that breaks the fiber network or network of tenacious subutum. So the mechanism is the break of the fiber networks of what? Of the expectoration of the subutum. Oral dose is 8 to 16 mg TDS. TDS means three times per day. Side effects, GIT upset and rhinorrhea. Rhinorrhea means water release from the nose, which is called runny nose, runny nose. Ambor, uh, ambroxol, metabolite of bromhexine, and has a similar mode of action. Estacystine. It is a mucolytic that decreases the viscosity of a mucus by sublating the bisulfide as, as bonds of mucoproteins. So this is one of the mechanisms, is the sublating of the bonds. Rather, sublating of the bonds of mucoproteins. And when the mucoproteins diverse, this needs to increase what the, uh, make the clearance of the secretion more easy or faster the secretion or the removal of the secretion. Action facilitated by alkaline is done by nebulization. Also, we have oral preparation. Side effect, nausea, vomiting, stomatitis, and bronchospasm. Dornez alpha, this is another example. Other ways or other methods to control the cough, other than drugs, or other than what we discussed in the beginning of the lectures, or this lecture. Other what drinking of the water, uh, warm water, inhaling.